All right, guys. Uh, today I'll talk a little bit on what we call the Huggins Simons condition, which is very important when you are to actually go with input output analysis. So, it, this Hawkins Simons condition has two important criteria that is actually designed by one by Hawkins and Simons both together. They have designed this criteria for the economic system or the input output or the input coefficient matrix that we get so that the economy is viable. Okay. Anyway, the first one is state state, the elements of the input coefficient matrix or when we actually find out the uh, i minus a matrix out of the input coefficient matrix that is your a matrix in order to find out the gross output or the final demand for you know input output analysis the first condition states that like what your i minus a matrix should be greater than or equal to zero or the elements i mean the all the coefficients all these elements should be greater than or equal to zero so that's why i have given this here it may be zero also but it should be greater than or equal to zero that is the first condition the first uh, condition that is required for the system to remain viable for a according to the token simons condition and the second one is like what the principal diagonal elements of the i minus a matrix should be less than 1 and greater than 0 see the principal diagonal diagonal elements means these elements 0 0.15 0 0.18 and 0 0.17 so this is the principal diagonal element so all these type elements that are lying on the diagonal of the of this matrix should be less than 1 so here we have it is to be 0.15 and here and it is greater than 0 of course and second one that is 0.18 it is uh, less than 1 again and it is of course greater than 0 and lastly this 0.17 which is less than 1 and greater than 0 basically what the uh, the Hawkins Simons condition is such that all the elements okay the elements of the input coefficient matrix should be greater than or equal to 0 this may be also again a 0 all right but the diagonal elements cannot be zero it should be less than one but greater than zero all these diagonal elements these elements this element and this element should be less than one and again it should be greater than zero now again all these other elements these elements may also be zero according to the first condition this may also be zero all right now again this may also be zero so that's why i have put it to be zero here like this just for your understanding all right so this is the Hawkins simons condition now let me move on to one another important discussion regarding the input output analysis anyway the labor coefficient matrix all right so when we are given the suppose we are oh yeah suppose we are to find out the total employment in a in a given economic system or the whole uh, process of the input output analysis suppose we are given the labor matrix or the labor coefficient matrix or the labor matrix generally this labor matrix or the labor coefficient matrix is a matrix of uh, or a diagonal uh, or a, it is a actually a diagonal matrix okay that means a diagonal matrix means all the elements all the elements are uh, zero except the diagonal elements are it may be one or it may be anything it may be less than or greater than equal to zero that's what the labor coefficient matrix is a diagonal matrix anyway diagonal matrix is a matrix where only the diagonal elements are present there and all the all the other elements are zero all right so when we are to find out the total amount of labor that are being employed okay total amount of labor that is employed in the different sectors of the economy so what we have to do is we have to follow this formula given your labor coefficient matrix now this of course is nothing but your gross output it gives us the gross out output if you remember this is nothing but x is equal to i minus a inverse of f if we are that is when we find out the gross sectoral outputs anyway if you are to find out the sectoral labor employments 
given the labor matrix it is of this format okay e is equal to l the labor matrix e means your employment in the different sectors of the economy l is your labor coefficient matrix which is a diagonal matrix and of course this is nothing but your gross output it is a gross sectoral outputs x1 x2 and x3 or your primary secondary or tertiary sector or you can elaborately you can understand from this that means uh, e1 means the total number of the labors that is employed in sector 1 primary sector the total number of labors employed in sector 2 or that is in uh, uh, the industrial sector and total number of labors that are that are being employed in sector third that is the services sector and accordingly we have the labor coefficient matrix this is our labor coefficient matrix multiplied by your i minus a inverse of f which is nothing but your gross sectoral outputs so that's why i have given it or you have to simply multiply your uh, labor coefficient matrix with your gross sectoral outputs then we can get your total number of labors that are employed in different sectors of the economy by simply following your basic uh, matrix um, mathematical operations or instructions that you are generally asked to do when you are to find in the matrix multiplication method okay anyway these are two, two important topics that is the hokken simons condition and the labor coefficient matrix that means the first one states like what for an economic system to be viable or, or the input output analysis to be viable you need two important conditions okay and the, and the second one is the labor uh, that if you are to find out the uh, total um, uh, labors that are being employed in different sectors of the economy you need to have a labor matrix and just multiply it by your gross sectoral outputs uh, with the labor coefficient matrix well that's all for today again now thank you guys